Hi, unfortunately it's me again and we have been experimenting with some pixelation shaders and today I thought we are going to rebuild this sort of retro style effect. You can adjust the amount of pixelation in your image, the dithering effects on the side, how grainy it is and how grainy it should not be, and of course the color palette. Maybe it's hard to see with the compression of, of YouTube, but let's look directly into the sun and we can change the bit depth of the light values. As always, if you do not have the time to sit through this tutorial, then you can just buy it for like four bucks on my Patreon or get it from my website and gallis.com. For everyone who knows what he's doing, here's a quick overview. First of all, we are going to make the pixelation shader. So we're going to pixelation, multiply, floor divided, put it into a post process input so that we can pixelate the whole image. Also, we use the same multiplier to have our UV texture coordinates for images like this cross, this cross, this dot and this black pixel. We're taking the light values out of the RGB into HSV. So here we have the light values. And then we're gonna divide it and say everything below 0 0.4 uh, should display this map, everything below 0 0.3 should display this map, and so on and so forth. We're gonna lerp that with its own image. Additionally, we are going to get those dither dots uh, with the same method. We're multiplying those dither dots, making them appearing on a slightly higher value, and then lerping it all back together and multiplying it over the original image at the end. So, for those of you who are quick, let's, you can screenshot or pause everything if you just wanna rebuild it and know how to rebuild it. There you go, and that is every single node, perfect. For everyone else, we are going to rebuild this exact shader from scratch starting now. Let's add a new material. We're calling it tutorial, I like to call it dither. Let's open up tutorial dither on this screen right here and make it big, perfect. Tutorial dither is not a surface material, but a post-process material. Yes, and in order to see something, we gotta take in scene texture. And we change it from scene color to post process input zero. Put it into emissive color. Now we're gonna quickly start with our first pixelation shader. So we're gonna get our scene, our screen position. I always say scene, screen position. Drag out viewport UV and multiply it. Then we're gonna floor it, so we're gonna round down. Floor it and we're going to divide it so that we have a difference between those two. So if we would multiply it and then immediately divide it through the same value, which we are going to do per... We wanna, we wanna have a scalar parameter then that nothing would change, but since we're flooring it down and then dividing it, we have a slight difference and this is what pixelates the image. So this parameter, I'm um, say a top of 250 and a bottom of 50 and our default value is around 150, I'd say. And you see that we have our first pixelation shader and you can play with this value. It is less pixelated the higher the value goes, it's more pixelated the lower your value goes. So if you only were up for a pixelation shader, here you go, that's exactly it. In the beginning I described that for this dithering effect and those artifacts in the image, we have to use the light value. So how do we get the light value of a color? Usually we would use the HSL color range, which is a a way to describe color and um, maybe I can pull up a picture. That should be it. Let's use this one right here. For instance, we have a, our lightness value and everything that is one on the lightness scale, you can see it up here is purely white and we love that. We cannot use the HSL color value, but the HSV, which is a bit different, but in our case it is good enough because Unreal does not really support HSL as far as I know, but we can split RGB to HSV and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna drag another one out, 
because right now if you would view this this will like look like crazy you know like there is that's not a black and white image but we want the black and white image so we're gonna float break out float three components so we have hsv and we want the value it is going to map to rgb so R is H, S is G, and V is B. So our light value is in the B value. So if we connect that, we see that we have a perfectly mapped lightness value. So everything that is has a light value is white and everything that is darker is black. And we're gonna use this as some sort of mask later on. Now we're coming to the more complex part of things. Let me see if I can readjust this window. Perfect, because I pre-prepared a couple of images. And those images are, we are in dithering, but I have it in bit depth deforms. All right. So we have a couple of images that are not really, I coded them with the amount of light percent that I wanted them to be, just for me as a reference. You don't have to stick to it, but you can see that a purely white image so mapping to this white back here should be displayed as a white. If it's only 75% white, then it should have a dot in it. If it is 60% white, it should have a cross in it. 50% is gray, 35% is gray with black dots, 10%. You get the gist of it. So I think that the coolest effect is if we do not use the top four of them, but only have these three images in them. For good measure, I think that I'm gonna throw in this one as well. So if, if I open this up, you can see that there is nothing spectacular going on. It's a 100 by 100 image with a cross in it that is 25 pixels wide and you know 100 long and 25 pixels wide and 100 long. So we're gonna just throw them in here, throw them in here. You can. I don't know if we, you know, we don't, we don't really have to use the black one, but let's just do it anyways. You can create them in, in paint, in, in Adobe Illustrator, in Photoshop, whatever you are most comfortable with. What we are going to do is use the multiply as our UVs, which means that for every pixel that we have in our multiplication, every pixel that we have, we are getting one of those images. So the higher the value, the more often these images are getting repeated. That's what we want. That each pixel only has one of these images in them. All right, now we're going to get into some sort of programming. Get the if condition, if. So we have our value to compare. I'm typing one on my keyboard and left click. Additionally, you can just say, constant and take a constant right here we're gonna connect it to the b and say it is the value of one then we're gonna take our lightness value and we put it into our a connection so what this is going to do it is comparing the a input to the b input and if we say every part of image a that is brighter than b should be something every part of the image a that is equally bright as B, then we get out something. Every part of the image from A that is less bright than B, we're getting out something that is, yeah, that we define. Right now we define everything as one. Uh, it makes no sense right now, but we need it later on, perfect. So, because right now this is where it's getting interesting. That up there is just because Unreal needs it. So we're gonna plug this one in A again. So this is our reference image. And now we have the value. Right click on B and say promote the parameter. And this is our, let's say, dither value. Our dither value, all right? And we're gonna say it can go up to 0 0.8 or 0. Three, and our midtone is about 0 0.5. That's our default value. So this is also a black and white image. This is a black and white image. So again, we're saying everything in picture A that is brighter than 0 0.5, which is a light gray, should display this one up here. Everything for good measures, we say everything that is equally as bright should also be just white. Everything that is not as bright, so it's 
less bright than 0.5 should display this cross right here. And now we're gonna repeat the step and let's do a little bit of math and say subtract so we can subtract about 0.1. This is the difference between those two. So right now this node says that 0.5 minus 0.1 is 0.4. So everything in image A that is brighter than 0.4 display whatever comes out of here. And what comes out of here, we just defined up there. Everything that is less bright than 0.4 give us this little cross right here. And we're going to do the exact same thing again. 0.4. Yeah, let's say 0 0.8. This is an arbitrary number. You know, you can put in whatever you want to. Oh, I misclicked here. All right, everything that is darker than 0 0.8 is just pure dark. So what happens if we view this? This is what it looks like right now. And this is our mask. I mean, this, is, this already is a cool effect on its own, but we're just gonna use it as a mask. In lerping terms, that means everything that is white will display A and everything that is B will display the black. So if we're gonna put the HSV in here and view this, we sort of get our color back except for where, you, where we defined our black values. So it's not purely black and white anymore, but actually has our color. To have a bigger control of our values, I'm usually gonna add a bit of color to it, so it's not this dark. I'm, I'm adding 0.2 to it. You can add, add around the same color if you want to. And now we're going to multiply, multiply, and multiply it with the original image color. Why would we do this? So. We just established that there is a black and white picture coming out and we're gonna multiply it. So everything that is purely black is a zero, which means we are multiplying a zero with our original image, which will result in a black image because everything multiplied by zero is zero. And that goes to the, the same rule applies to everything on the zero to one scale as well. So every white value will multiply the original image by one, which means it is untouched. So that's why we have our original image right here. And we have this cool dithering effect already. There's a little touch with those small dots that I showed in the presentation before. And I kind of love that you can skip this part if you don't want to, but I really love those, those dots. So I'm going to go to content and I think I had it in my ASCII effect. Yes, the full stop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag the full stop in here. This is again, just a picture of a dot, you know, a white, a white dot. <laughs> it's not nothing more, nothing less. So I'm going to drag this dot in here and we're going to multiply it by the same UV texture. And what we're going to do with this is actually we're going to invert the picture invert because right oh, one minus is invert yes because we're going to use it as a mask as well so we're going to do the same lerping magic again so if if let me think for a second yes we're going to put that in the lower bottom again we're going to we are going to recreate what we did up here and this did the contrast, mm, let's say a 0 0.3 and a 0 0.5 and its usual value is 0 0.15. And we're gonna add it, add it to our value up here, the dither value. So why would we do that? We're gonna put it to be so that it extends. See, there is this, our dither is this region. It goes until 0.5 darkness value. So we're gonna say the contrast is we are adding 0.15 to it. So the dithering should extend a bit outwards. If we say 0.3, then the dithering extends even more. If we turn down the, vol the value to 0.05, it should be almost in level with the dithering that we described here. And we're gonna subtract 
for this lower value, the same as we did up here. So we sort of automated and we're going to subtract 0 0.1 and not a one. And we're gonna put that in A and B, same as we did before. And our value that we are comparing against is again A. Perfect. One on the keyboard, clicking, and we are going to add the one in here. One, two, and three. Perfect. If we multiply these together now, multiply, 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 we get an error because one of our inputs is not a float for input. So what we're gonna do is component mask. Essentially one of ours does not have an alpha and it's this one. So we're gonna reduce this one to a four dimensional vector to a three dimensional vector. Now it's fine. And now you can see the dithering, what we did. So we have a little bit of contrast if we reduce this to if we put it up to 0 0.5 for instance there's a lot of dithering over everywhere if we put it to 0 0.01 then we are sort of in line with this one and that's what we did it's just a little touch that i really enjoy so we have a little bit of a soft edge with small dithering it's just a fine touch but i think it adds a whole lot speaking about adding a whole lot uh, we are almost done with our shader. We are almost done with our shader. Did we have too much color in here? So we gotta have to restrict the color that we're getting because you know, back then there was weren't 64 bits of color depth, but maybe just eight. So how do we do this? Essentially it's exactly the same as we reduced the pixel size back here. So we're gonna, except for floor, we're gonna now seal which is round up, okay? I'm gonna round up and, and multiply. This is a scalar parameter again. This one we call color, oh, where am I? There you go. Color depth, perfect. We say 64 for the maximum and eight for the minimum and our default is 16. Yes, we're gonna put it in divide here as well. And now we're just gonna hijack this line right here and multiply it straightly directly into our dithering. And now we are done. There you go. Now we have our tutorial dither effect complete. So we're gonna close this window right here. We're gonna go to content, dithering, tutorial dither, perfect. Post, process volume, perfect. Drag it in here, then say unbound. So look for unboot. And now it is infinite. Perfect, and now let's go look for post. Plus, choose asset reference, and we're going to drag our dithering effect in here, and this is how it looks per default. Now we can adjust the parameters as we please. For instance, we want it to be less pixelated. Perfect, the dither value, the color depth, for instance, make it more clean, the dither contrast, a bit bigger, the dither value, maybe we want it to dither a bit more. So the dither contrast is a bit less, the dither value is a bit less. Now you can adjust it to wherever you want it and whatever you need. Thank you very much for paying attention. If you found it difficult to follow along, you know, you could always purchase this effect on my Patreon or the link is in the description below or my web on my website. The link is also in the description below. Let me know what you want to hear next. Leave a comment down below if you want to know something else. Also give feedback or, you know, just say hi. I hope I could nudge you in the right direction and that I could help you save some time. See you later.